Yo, ho, ho, Don Mafia. It is that time of the week again where I give you my weekly preview of the Buffalo Bills opponent. And it just so happens that we are starting our primetime game stretch this Monday night at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time against the San Francisco 49ers. Now, we all thought that the Bills were going to be traveling all the way to the Bay Area in California, but now it seems like we're about to be going back to the exact same field where we witnessed the luckiest play on the face of the planet, which made the Buffalo Bills 8-3, and three, which they very well damn should be 9-2, and two, but I digress. This is time for revenge, baby. We're going to go into Arizona once again, and we're going to spank the San Francisco 49ers, and I'm here for it. I really am. Now, I do want to preface this, right? While some could argue that the San Francisco 49ers logo should be replaced by a handicap sign, this team is still surprisingly pretty good, especially on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to dive into it, and per usual, I'm going to give you my predictions on how I feel the Buffalo Bills offense is going to perform against the 49ers defense, and how the 49ers offense is going to perform against the Buffalo Bills defense, and I'm super excited to start rolling with that. I do want to give a quick shout out. Thank you for 10,000 subscribers. I hit it about two or three days ago. It is so damn humbling. I'm working on a 10,000 subscriber vlog for all of you, and you're going to get an idea of a day in the life. I'm going to have a heart to heart with you fools, and then um, I'm going to be announcing the winner of either a Xbox Series X or a PS5. So definitely stay tuned for that. I'm hoping to have it out on Sunday, I'd say, but definitely stay tuned. Don Mafia, this game, I am very, very excited about it. I really need us to be 9-3. and three. I really, really need us to be 9-3, and three, especially once you look at the Miami Dolphins opponent this week. I mean, I would absolutely love for the Bengals to absolutely pull off an upset against the Miami Dolphins and just help us continue to gain our lead in the AFC East division, but it's not looking like that. So some might say that this coming Monday night is a must win for the Buffalo Bills. Starting off, I feel like we need to look at the San Francisco 49ers offense, in my opinion, not the scariest squad on the face of the planet, particularly um, with out Garoppolo and Kittle, but they still tend to make plays. And so how are the Buffalo Bills going to beat this team offensively? When I look at the 49ers, right, if you were to ever scratch that, if you were to look up the word dink and dunk offense in the Webster's Dictionary, you would see the San Francisco 49ers logo. That is exactly, exactly what they are, particularly under Nick Mullins, who we are about to be facing this coming Monday night. His average pass is five to six yards. He really doesn't take a lot of shots deep downfield. It's legitimately trying to kill you horizontally. Now, that doesn't really sound scary, right? Especially from this particular perspective. But the San Francisco 49ers are among some of the best in the league for yards after the catch. So if there is any game whatsoever that the Buffalo Bills absolutely need to tackle, be in their gaps, and make plays, it has to be this one. Now, as far as the offense in general for the San Francisco 49ers, with all the injuries considered, they're still doing pretty damn good. And so they're still putting up 23.7 points per game and somewhat close to 251 passing yards per game and 112 yards on the ground, right? So, I mean, as far as the passing game is concerned, I have a lot of faith in the Buffalo Bills secondary and particularly linebackers, especially since Matt Milano is going to be back, and especially once you consider how great and fantastic A.J. Klein has been performing as of late. Nick Mullins, he's a backup for a reason. He's only started about 11 games in his entire career, and while his completion percentage on paper seems to be pretty scary, you need to understand when about 90% of the passes that you attempt are five to six yards, you better have that completion percentage. You better not be having any bad throws whatsoever. Now, it's funny because he was an undrafted free agent for the 49ers, and it looks like when he's in play action, he's tremendous, high 60%. When he's not in play action, he's around the exact same. But the key to beating Nick Mullen is by pressuring him. When you pressure Nick Mullen, he only completes 53% of his passes. And while our defense has been showing a, and so a much larger pressure rate, especially compared right to the beginning of the season, this could be the game for the Buffalo Bills to dial it up. Mr. AJ Klein, I really hope that you're in the backfield early and often. I wouldn't blitz on this team, and because with that style of dink and dunk offense, it could hurt us, but 
that's exactly how I would attack. I need the Bills to pressure the hell out of Nick Mullen. Now, the scariest thing about the 49ers offense is probably going to be their run game, and that, of, of course, is Raheem Mostert. And so they have this wide zone rush attack, and in case you want an example of that, just go back and look up tape at the second half during the Rams game. Very, very similar. That game where the Rams just ran all over the Buffalo Bills. That's most likely what we are about to see. He's an explosive running back. He can make people miss. But at the end of the day, as far as the keys for the Buffalo Bills into actually pulling this off against this defense, it's going to have to be tackling, tackling, tackling and then pressuring Moen as much as you possibly can. And so, all right, so now it comes down to the Buffalo Bills offense versus the San Francisco 49ers defense. Now, like I was alluding to earlier, while this team has suffered several injuries, and so most likely missing out on Bosa and a couple of other tremendous players, this defense still seems to get it done. As far as statistics for the 49ers are concerned, and so you're looking at 23 points allowed per game, which is in the top echelon of the NFL, 315 total yards per game, 206 passing yards allowed per game, and 112 rush yards allowed per game. So with all these injuries in consideration, this team is still performing relatively well. As far as personnel that you absolutely need to watch out for, of course, they still have Eric Armstead. Of course, they have that rookie Kinlaw who came out of South Carolina being that interior defensive tackle. And then, of course, you ended up getting Richard Sherman back. And finally, for the first time in God knows how long, a healthy Jason Verrett, the two CBs that will be lining up on the outside. Now, when you look at this defense, right, they really don't have a lot of speed in their secondary. So in order to cure this, they run a lot of zone. And if we have ever seen Josh Allen struggle at all this year, it was when these types of teams played a lot of zone trying to confuse a quarterback. I mean, and so realistically, guys, Richard Sherman, he's not going to be lining up eye to eye with Diggs and going one on one on him. The San Francisco 49ers know that. And same with Cole Beasley. It's simply just not going to happen. So their plan is to go on ahead and try to keep everything in front of them. They play a lot of zone and they do whatever they can to confuse quarterbacks in those various zone schemes that they throw out there. And so say that I was the offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. What I'm doing is I'm trying to find as many mismatch matchups as you can find. They're going off of a second string slot corner. So once again, this is time for big blonde daddy himself, Cole Beasley, to go on ahead and absolutely ball the fuck out. And then realistically, just go on ahead and be aggressive. Like Joe Marino said on the Locked On Bills podcast, Nick Mullins, I wouldn't trust him on a comeback. So go on ahead, go out there. And so be completely aggressive on these guys the second that you step on this field. Get ahead early because Nick Mullins is not the kind of quarterback that can orchestrate a comeback when they're down by two to three scores. In my opinion, I'm assuming this is going to be a pass first type of game plan, but there are some weaknesses in the interior of their, of their defensive line where we could see some potential success from either Devin Singletary or Zach Moss. The only thing I want to see is good complimentary football. We cannot have those three straight turnovers like we had last week. I mean, it was a surprise that we ended up pulling out that victory with things like that happening. Our defense bailed us out. But this game, I want to see our offense go back to weeks one through four and the Seattle Seahawks game. I want to see them firing on all cylinders. And I also want to see our defense take advantage of an offense that is largely filled with a bunch of backups at this point. Don Mafia, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Don Mafia Report. Uh, do keep in mind, I am going to be live streaming my reaction. I know a lot of you guys were upset that I didn't do it last week. I uh, had some complications, but I'm back. I'm going to a Bills backer bar in my neck of the woods. Should be a blast. And I really want you to tune in. As far as the rest of the week's schedules content is concerned, um, I'm probably going to do a live stream. I'll most likely do like a Q&A or something like that. And then I'm probably going to be putting out um, sort of a hypothetical video. Uh, which I know that you guys enjoy during the off season. So definitely, definitely enjoy it. And stay tuned, baby, because this content's coming. Thank you for tuning in. And above all else, let's go Buffalo.